So in just under two weeks time, 11 days at the point of this publication, Season 1 Reloaded kicks off for Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone. So what can we expect to see? What should you be aware of that is coming? Today we're going to be taking a look at Season 1 Reloaded for Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone and answering all that plus more. So as we go along, drop your thoughts down below, drop a like if you enjoyed the video, and make sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all things Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone ahead of Season 1 Reloaded and other FPS content like X Defiant and beyond. Finally, check out my friends over at G Fuel for up to 30% off your entire order with code ESPRESSO, but more on that a little later. For now, let's jump into Season 1 Reloaded and what we need to know about what's coming. So first and foremost, from a functional perspective, we got a handful of things, firstly in Modern Warfare 3, things like new weaponry. We've touched on this before, so I don't want to stay on it too long, but we have the new weapons, the HRM-9, an SMG, and the TAC Evolvery, an LMG, coming within mid-season. Now, assuming none of these have changed or the unlock criteria has changed since when I played it over at Sledgehammer ahead of the launch of Season 1 in early December, the HRM-9 should be something that is an armory unlock and the attack of Alvary looks to be a part of that classified battle pass sector, likely coming along the same way we've seen it the last couple of seasons within Modern Warfare 2, where there's going to be five tiers of challenges that you have to complete before unlocking that final challenge with attack of Alvary as that overall reward for that battle pass sector. So instead of taking just five additional battle pass sort of playtime hours to unlock that, you can do it quicker, but it's going to still take about five different things to complete as an overall reward. We also see that new map of Rio coming. This is another one that honestly I enjoyed for my one game of playtime, but again, it was just simply that one game of playtime at Sledgehammer. The capture event that we had before season one was a strange one in some of the formats. Most recently in what we showed off was the Vortex event maps. That was something we played all of those in standard game modes. We didn't even know that the Vortex LTM was going to be a thing. That was announced actually the day later, whenever everybody started to get home. We didn't play that. Same thing with Rio. We didn't really get a whole ton of playtime and experience of what may truly be the accurate representation of the map, but from one game, I did somewhat well. I enjoyed myself. I thought that when you looked at the map from a sort of functional perspective and how the three lanes would play out, you had long range on the outside, very close quarters on some of the hallways leading to mid map, and then mid map was kind of SMG and AR heavy, perhaps, where it's a little bit too big maybe for shotguns, but also still close enough and compact that you will see a lot of those gunfights that you wouldn't want something like a sniper rifle or anything like that. It reminds me of like this sort of in aesthetic, a combination of Mercado in terms of overall setting, but also the mid portion reminds me of the Pines from Black Ops Cold War. I don't know if that's just because one's a mall and this one's a mall. I don't, I don't know. But anyways, that's something that did enjoy the map overall. That'll be coming with mid-season as well. We'll see new modes, not necessarily all at the mid-season update, but the introduction of these starting marked by the mid-season season update. We'll have Headquarters Return, a mode that's been in just about every single Call of Duty and in the last couple of years has only been an LTM, but Headquarters where you have to fight to secure the Headquarters location, capture it, and then when you do, that's when your points will start to generate for how long you end up holding that. Respawning will be disabled for the team that captures it, and then the enemy will take it offline, and that's when they stop the counter for how much score is being added to the enemy team, and also when destroyed, when it will signify the other team's respawning will begin again. Team Gunfight is being introduced here, where this is going to be gunfight in a 6v6 fashion, but played on standard MP maps. So your maps from Modern Warfare 2 2009, plus all the new ones here of Meat, Grease, and Rio, but still round-based one-life game modes that will just be a different way and a larger way to play gunfight if you're a fan of gunfight. And then Standard Infected will be coming back here, whether or not it's going to be something that is in that regular rotation of standard modes in quick play, or if it'll be something that's an LTM, that will be returning in the standard fashion. Again, we already did see the Infected for the Cadmus event here the last couple, of weeks, but Standard Infected will be coming alongside this as well. In Zombies, we'll have a new Warlord. That'll be something that will give Zombies players a bit more to interact with, some more perhaps loot to gain and other challenges. But beyond that, nothing's really detailed in the Zombie side of things. And then on a smaller scale thing before we touch on probably the biggest thing for multiplayer and Modern Warfare 3 in particular that's coming, before we get to that, the Boys event will be coming at some point within this mid-season update as well. Whether or not it is on the 17th here and when the season actually launches, or if it will be something that comes like two weeks down the line, right in the middle point between the mid-season update and the season two update coming in February. We don't quite know at the moment, but that will be something that will bring along new challenges, new bundles, new operator skins. We have A-Train and Firecracker, if I'm not mistaken, as that silhouetted classified operator. But that's, again, a more minor thing that is kind of a maybe afterthought, but will be coming after this update for Season 1 Reloaded. The biggest thing, though, that looks to be coming within Season 1 Reloaded is that of ranked play for Modern Warfare 3. Not quite Warzone just yet. 
that might be something that maybe I'd expect that in Season 2 Reloaded. Maybe Season 2, if they really want to get ambitious with it, drop both of them around the same time. But for me, I'm thinking Season 2 Reloaded, maybe Season 3. But by all indications, Modern Warfare 3 ranked play looks to be coming within this mid-season update on the 17th. While not confirmed, it's the most logical date for an in-season update that makes sense because it will require a genuine title update. Now, this looks to work the exact same way that we saw Modern Warfare 2 ranked. You have your divisions of Bronze, Silver, Gold, Platinum, Diamond, Crimson, Iridescent, and your top 250, with skill ratings and ranking up going the same way. You win matches, you gain SR. You lose matches, you lose SR. Individual performance will impact the number of what you gain or lose, but the basic fact of win Win and gain as well as lose and lose will persist with that starting off it seems like all players will be in bronze in year with other seasons like the season two refresh season three refresh that stuff will start you one skill division lower than your season end skill division minus crimson and higher usually everybody reset back to diamond at that point and then your ranked play rewards as to beyond just having those bragging rights of a higher ranked skill division and what you can show off there i imagine it would follow suit for what we see previously smaller things like charms emblems uniforms a veteran camo for 100 wins plus a blueprint somewhere in the mix as well personally i'd love to see a genuine camo for placement which that was awesome i loved season five of modern warfare 2 and warzone because that was something that i had genuinely like something to go for at that point so big fan of that would love for that to be a standard going forward within ranked play for modern warfare 3 and warzone but we'll see what becomes of that now that said talking warzone a little bit we are going to see a little bit added within Warzone at Season 1 Reloaded. Obviously, the world of Urzikstan, the whole integration is still relatively new in the grand scheme of things, so we're not going to see a ton of stuff as compared to what we see maybe with Season 2, a Season 3, and the larger like season drops, but we'll still see some updates in terms of content for Warzone and Season 1 Reloaded, including the return of Champions Quest. That being the nuke contract, and the same parameters will exist with this. Five wins and an opportunity with one player per squad size to activate the contract. If you do go on that five win streak so if you end up winning five games in a row solos you have one opportunity to activate that champion's quest contract so use it wisely if you do it in duos you have two opportunities you and your teammate trios well three times you and every one of your teammates will have the opportunity to end up activating it and same thing with quads you have four opportunities with four players so when you do activate it you have to collect the nuke elements wait for the bomb casing to drop deposit and activate the nuke and defend it until it's detonation and if you do well then you win the game immediately but you also get some rewards for your account that will be pretty exclusive not everybody's going to be able to do this but those rewards right now are yet to be announced. Now, the difference between this year's Champions Quest and last year's with Modern Warfare 2 is that you can actually steal this one once per game at this point. Now, this can only be done once. So once you wipe that squad that is on that nuke contract, they're going for the nuke, you can actually take it over and then do it for yourselves at that point. But if somebody else wipes your squad, that will no longer drop again for that other player or other team that came in as a third or fourth party. They will not have the ability to end up doing that. So you can only steal once per match, which is going to be interesting. I don't know how much in theory I like that because it was already the entire lobby gunning for you to begin with. So if you do it, you're going to have even more pressure. It honestly might like be kind of smart to kind of go for it if you're not going for it, if that makes sense. Like if you see somebody in your lobby that is on that nuke contract, if you get that steal, well, then it just gets back to that regular sort of Modern Warfare 2 Warzone nuke contract where you have everybody gunning for you, sure, but there's no ulterior motive of people can try and steal it at that point. So it kind of alleviates some pressure, but like just brings it back down to normal. I don't know. Anyways, that's going to be something that will be available with Warzone Season 1 Reloaded. We're also going to see two additional things which are interesting to me, one being the Covert Exfil. This I'm kind of having trouble wrapping my head around because it's an Exfil from a Battle Royale match. So, sounds like you can finish a Warzone match without actually fully completing it, if that makes any sense. Which is odd, but also it leads to the following. The weapons case is going to be returning from DMZ, but in a Battle Royale capacity. This is something that is going to be coming back with various rewards, perhaps a handful on random drop allotments for however many times you exfil with it, or perhaps as a static sort of rate on the reward where the first time you exfil with it, you always get this one reward, second time, always that same reward, and so on and so forth. But that'll be introduced with Season 1 Reloaded as well, and you'll be able to end up getting some exclusive rewards out of that, it seems so interesting but uh, i'm not sure how that's gonna play in battle royale i feel like that's a little strange one to add in that fashion dmz it made sense because x filling was of course the main goal but 
with Battle Royale, I don't know, it's weird, but I guess we'll see how that plays out. But anyways, that's the content coming with Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone in Season 1 Reloaded, so when's all this happening? Well, it'll launch on January 17th, based off of what we see in the Battle Pass right now in that countdown timer on the Classified Sector, so that's when you should be aware of it. Again, not this upcoming Wednesday, but the following Wednesday beyond that. We're going to start likely seeing some of the sort of promotion and marketing for this update coming as of next week at some point, but just preliminarily here, I want to let you know that there is still a decent bit on deck you can look forward to if you're looking for something to refresh this season a little bit and give you a bit more reason to keep going in the season. But anyways, that's where we're going to wrap it up. Before we do, though, make sure you check out my friends over at G Fuel. Going into the new year here, make sure you use code ESPRESSO for up to 30% off your entire order. To me, G Fuel is my cup of coffee in the morning, gets my productivity flowing and the day going. Whether or not you want to grab a restock or pick something up for the very first time, you can grab some of my favorite tubs like Hype Sauce, Pog Juice, something like a starter kit, Code Espresso can help you out with all those with a nice discount from anywhere year round of 10 to 30% off your entire order. Personally, I'd recommend my team Carnage, our flavor of Pog Juice, Pink Trip, the Morbius Nectarine flavor, Starfruit, and again, Hype Sauce, like I mentioned. But if you want to check anything out for yourself, check the link in the description below and use Code Espresso at checkout. But for now, that's what we're going to call it. So let me know your thoughts down below. Looking forward to season one reloaded. Not so much. Whatever the case, drop your thoughts. But if you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you almost a single thing running all things Modern Warfare 3, Warzone, other FPS games like X Defiant, and some other cool indie stuff we're going to touch on here in a little bit. I'd love to have in the community. But for now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.